That movie sucked. I kind of liked it. Movie Night Crew Network. Harry Potter was a highly unusual boy in many ways. For one thing, he hated the summer holidays more than any other time of year. For another, he really wanted to do his homework, but was forced to do it in secret in the dead of night. And he also happened to be a wizard. What's up, potheads? Welcome to the restricted section, in which a bunch of nerds with potty mouths reread the Harry Potter series for the umpteenth time and discuss how the story and its themes have stayed with a generation into adulthood. Thank you for listening. If you haven't done the reading, don't worry, we did it for you. Here's what we are talking about today. The Prisoner of Azkaban, Chapter 1, Alpost. In this chapter, a lonely Harry Potter gets a series of deliveries to celebrate his birthday. Happy birthday, Harry! All right, well, let's get started. Okay, shit, 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 shit. Um, I always, uh, wait, give me a second to think of a great way to start this podcast. I think uh, shit, 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 shit works really well. <laughs> <laughs> Are you drinking a Moscow Mule? I actually, I made it myself. It's an autumn mule, is what oh, I called it. What? How um, is that different? So, uh, it has, it's supposed to have vodka in it. I don't have vodka. I have spiced rum. So, oh. I did spiced rum, apple cider, the juice of half of a lime. Um, and then I did a tablespoon of the pumpkin butter that I made a couple weeks ago, and then shook it all up, and then garnished it with apples, a cinnamon stick, and then you pour some ginger beer over top of it. What? I show off. I, um, show I, off. Good. I need one and I can wait for you to get here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm on my way. <laughs> that sounds um, amazing. I will be, I don't even buy rum, but like I'm going to go get a little thing of rum. That sounds <laughs> yeah, amazing. I, like write that down. Holy yeah, shit. I'll write it down. <laughs> I wow. just was like, what do I have lying around? I'm going to throw this in a glass. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get started. I just thought of a great way <laughs> to start the podcast. It's going to be great. Okay. Dear Harry, happy birthday. Love your host, Christina. Welcome to the restricted section. Yeah, I planned that one ahead of time. It's me, your host, Christina. I said that bit already. And we're here to start The Prisoner of Azkaban. I think it's like pretty much everyone's favorite, or at least like I think the transition from Chamber of Secrets to Prisoner of Azkaban, everyone's like, oh, yeah, I like this one. Yes. That's very true. (laughs) Haley, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Good. Yeah. Grace, how about you? I'm doing well. I went outside earlier and I'm still a little bit cold from that. (laughs) To the core. (laughs) Yes. And Grace, would you please do us the honor of introducing our guest today? Wow. I would love to. Um, I'm so happy to introduce today... Our special guest, my very own twin brother, Will Ball. Yay! Yay. Welcome! Hi, everybody. We're so glad you're here. Happy to be here. Just Long time listener, first time uh, guest. Uh, Yay! Oh, nice. that makes He's me so, so supportive. happy. <laughs> what a supportive brother. <laughs> <laughs> and just to set the scene for everyone, we're on a Zoom video call, and Will's wearing a Gryffindor shirt. There's a headwig and a broomstick just, like, casually behind him as if it's always there. I mean, that's where they go. <laughs> so are you a Gryffindor? Very misleading, uh, because I used to be a Gryffindor when I was younger, <laughs> um, and as I've aged and matured like a fine wine, I am now a Hufflepuff. Oh, Hufflepuffs! Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hufflepuffs! I'm just too damn loyal. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't know if anyone gives a shit about what I'm about to say, but my favorite season of Love Island, which is a shit, a shit show, a shit yes. show, um, there. <laughs> It was season four. My girl, Georgia, always screaming about how she's loyal. These hoes don't know I'm loyal. Um, I can't do her accent. Um, anyway, that's what the word loyal like exclusively reminds me of, even though I'm a Hufflepuff too. 
<laughs> so I was a Ravenclaw before I was a Hufflepuff, but I really dramatically got rid of my Ravenclaw shirt because I was like, this is me now. This one is typically, I'll, I'll wear it as a like, pajama shirt instead. Mm, mm-hmm. And although I actually don't have any Hufflepuff stuff yet, but I've well, definitely now, been a Hufflepuff for years. So I, Gryffindor has objectively better color scheme. I think maroon is really good on most skin tones, but like the yellow isn't quite as good on everyone, let's say. Mm-hmm. And so, Will, will you tell us a little bit about your very hairy history? Like, when did you start reading? Tell me everything. So, uh, Harry Potter and I have a very long history. Our cousin, uh, Griffin, actually is the one who got us our first set of four books for Christmas one year. He was like, hey, these were really good. You guys might like them. Is Griffin a Gryffindor by any chance? He might be. Uh, I think he's a puff. He's uh, probably a puff. I think he's a puff. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd see Maybe. him, he's a puff. <laughs> you can tell by looking. <laughs> yeah, he just looks really, like, nice. Aww, he like looks a nice guy. Like a nice guy, for sure. Yeah. Um, but so he actually gave it to us. We had it lying around for a while because we just hadn't gotten around to reading it. And um, I read the first book for a book report in first grade. Um, because they allowed us to use it as a book report. I was going to say, I definitely remember about third, fourth grade, my teacher started saying no Harry Potter for the book reports. I think, mm-hmm. yeah, it's because it, I think it was starting to get like big and everyone was doing it. So They're like, yeah. I, I can't like- read 15 Harry Potter <laughs> book reports this semester. I can't do yeah. it. So that's what initially started uh, me on my Harry Potter journey. And I, I got pretty into it really fast. Um, my st- our stepmom started reading the books too. Um, and I remember when the trailer dropped for the first movie and we were in the movie theater, like we freaked the fuck out because we were so excited. Um, and then I think Tabitha and Grace, uh, slowly got into the mix around that time as well. Um, and we've been, we've been big fans ever since. I went to, uh, the fifth, sixth, and seventh book releases. Um, thank goodness I didn't have to work them, but I did work at Barnes and Noble for eight years. Uh, but luckily it was after all the Harry Potter books. Came out. <laughs> I did have to deal with some Twilight, unfortunately, but mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. were there but, midnight, midnight releases for yeah. those books? Yeah. Just mm-hmm. a couple. They should have released, they should have for Breaking Dawn done like a Dawn release. That would have made so much <laughs> more sense. They missed an opportunity. For yeah. Sure. Who's, who's on their marketing? I don't know. They've had so much turnover CEO-wise for Barnes & Noble that it makes sense that they dropped the ball. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of sad, probably. I feel like they're our last pillar of like books being a mainstream thing. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> don't go. <laughs> that's like the only industry where the big box store, I'm like, please stay with us. We need you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we're really happy to have you with us, Will, um, especially because... The first chapter of Harry Potter books are notoriously lame, and this one is no exception. And so it's always good to have a great personality on with us to make it fun. Too kind. No (laughs) pressure. Don't fuck it up. (laughs) Well, I gotta go. Um. (laughs) Well, you got that broomstick, so (laughs) an easy exit. (laughs) Um, So today we're talking about the Prisoner of Azkaban. I almost said Chamber of Secrets. It's hard. I've been saying Chamber of Secrets for six solid months. We're talking about the Prisoner of Azkaban, Chapter 1, Owl Post. And then as I opened the book, I was like, oh, yeah, the last chapter of this book is Owl Post again. (laughs) (laughs) Solid. She's like, Solid I don't stuff. even care. Bringing what it chapters. full circle. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I'm about to blow some minds. <laughs> <laughs> starts with an owl, ends with an owl. In fact, this book starts with, Harry Potter was a highly unusual boy in many ways. Oh, was he? Do oh. tell. <laughs> Please elaborate. <laughs> oh, and she does. <laughs> I don't remember groaning at those kinds of introductions when I was a kid. And also it probably partially because it had been some time since I had read mm-hmm. the previous book, at least the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, I had waited. So I was like, remind me, I'm d- just happy to be here. <laughs> I, I think I remember feeling really comforted by the first chapters of these books, just because I'm like, oh yeah, I'm about to settle in. Yeah, and usually not a lot happens, 
even though stuff technically happens in this chapter, like not a lot happens, you know? So it's yeah. like, just like, come on in. It's like the foyer, yeah. like it welcome. Kinda, yeah, it eases you in to the, mm-hmm. to the new book. Yes. Yeah. I will say that like this first chapter is definitely better than the first chapter of Chamber of Secrets. Like there's just, there's more to set up in this chapter. Yes. Like, like all of the, you can kind of, if you know what happens, you can kind of see all of the pieces being laid. But like after our whole conversation, in the first chapter of Chamber of Secrets about like Harry Potter was an unusual boy and burp, 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 burp. like reading that first line like I did physically out loud go like oh god <laughs> <laughs> um but it, I mean that that the setup of that first sentence is like the equation through which we see the rest of the chapter including all the way to the last line where it's like he was happy finally to be a, a usual boy or whatever what we'll get we'll get to it i wrote the line down <laughs> so he's unusual because he really wants to do his homework but he, he's not allowed to he has to do his homework under the covers late at night and he has a lot of summer homework um and it sucks that he can't do that that would suck yeah i don't know well i guess i understand why the dursleys lock his school stuff away i would probably let him keep his textbooks nope nope it's the principle of the thing yeah <laughs> like the anything, is so familiar. anything magical has to <laughs> no, go away because, uh, no because like his his spell books look like fucking spell books like if yeah. the neighbors happen to be looking through binoculars in the window, like <laughs> like Aunt Petunia does with the fucking I neighbors, gonna like say, right. they're gonna yes. see a bunch of like old leather tomes on shelves, <laughs> and like that's gonna be way too fucking suspect for the Dursleys. It's already suspect enough that there's an owl in his room, right? Let alone mm-hmm. spell books. Yeah, if I was peeping on my neighbors and I saw an owl in their house, I'd be like, "Whoa, that's so <laughs> cool! I need to become their friend." Pretty metal. And I guess later in this chapter, Harry receives the Monster Book of Monsters, and that's not an acceptable book, but that ends up being the only one he has access to. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Definitely the least subtle of all of the magic books. <laughs> yep. Just such a fucking Hagrid move. Okay. <laughs> Classic. Classic well, Hagrid. Yeah, seriously. Harry's like not even surprised for one second. He's like, ah. Uh. <laughs> like, yeah, God damn it. it. <laughs> yeah, Classic Hagrid is pretty much exactly his response. Like, yeah. oh God, here we go. If he's going to send me a book, it's going to be one that bites. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so we get some exposition. Who are the Dursleys? What are we doing here? They're, they suck. They hate everything. Just like a little bit of reminiscing, we learn about Ron's legendary phone call. Oh my god! Which is one of my favorite moments in like the whole series. I just I wish that had been included in the movie <laughs> so badly. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Instead, in this movie, we get the notorious scene of Harry practicing Lumos in the middle of yeah, the night. I wrote that no down. Fucking I'm reason. still pissed by that. Yep. Honestly, like, I know that some people, like, the the third movie is very dear to them, but, like, Mm -hmm. considering how much I love the third book, I really don't like the third movie that much. It skips a lot of really important information. Marauders. just, like, it dedicates itself more to the aesthetic than it does to the story. The aesthetic's great. The aesthetic's great, but the The story's better. The story just kind of doesn't make sense unless you have the book knowledge to rely on, which that's not how movies should be. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that very is, stupid. That is, like, kind of a classic thing. Like, I think the Harry Potter movies and the Lord of the Rings movies kind of changed this. But, like, before those, I think that, like, movie adaptations of books were, like, kind of designed to be, like, you have to have read the book. Like, mm-hmm. like when we watched Dune over the weekend. Don't like, talk to me about Dune. I know. I know. But, like, if you think about it through that lens, it makes a lot more sense. It's still bad, but it makes a lot more sense by, like, oh, well, you have to have read the book to understand literally any of what's going on. And, like, the first couple of Harry God, Potter movies okay. are also like that. Just to be really clear, I still had no idea what was going on in Dune at any given moment. Like, no, that it was, was a nightmare. No, that it was, was an acid shitty, trip. It was shitty execution, but, like, that was clearly the intent so of, bad. like, you have to have read the book to like this is just like the highlights from the book like every scene is just a highlight from the book yeah i think i think that an important thing like i think that as as book readers we all understand that when you translate a book to a film 
you have to make some changes. You just gotta, and like, I think we all understand that, but I think the problem comes is when you start changing the rules of the world that you're in. Mm -hmm. And my classic example is the elf dwarf romance in the Hobbit movies. It's like, you can't go changing the world that we're in or detracting from Gimli and Legolas is beautiful friendship. Okay. (laughs) So I think that the Lumos thing is one of those examples. It's like, oh, I guess laws don't exist anymore. That's fine. Yep. It's just like a gross negligence of the, of like the world. Just like the fact that it was such a big deal last book and it becomes kind of a big deal in this book. You know what I mean? And then to completely disregard it. And then in the, in the fifth book, when he does the Patronus and then all of a sudden, oh, he has to go to court now. Even though yeah. he's just doing Lumos in the previous and the third movie, so yeah, totally. Um, yeah. Ra- random question: Do you think Dudley Dursley was allowed to read the Lord of the Rings? Would he have if he, he was? I feel like he can't read. <laughs> 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 to steal a line from Draco Malfoy, yeah, exactly. I he could read, but that he's was think- improvised in that movie and on that this was- podcast. <laughs> I respect Tom Felton so much. <laughs> Me too. I think he's the best child actor in these freaking movies. Oh, for sure. By far. But do you think that if Dudley had brought home Lord of the Rings... He wouldn't. I don't think he would. Okay, there's so just, there's just no, no it's, way to envision it's, him. No it's Lord just Lord. a moot point. Like, I think, you would, I think you'd be better off asking if, like, Dudley was allowed to read the Chronicles of Narnia, in which yeah, case, okay. like, the answer is still no. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they don't have books, and if they did, it would be, like stuff just for show like moby dick ernest hemingway like i'm a man's man and i read men yes that, probably yes. that are books about food i feel like oh yeah some I cookbooks mean, i mean aunt petunia probably has like a nora roberts collection <gasps> somewhere oh for yeah sure. for sure oh yeah. mary higgins clark <laughs> <laughs> yeah just like think mom of the 90s and like that's everyone knows what that bookshelf looks like she probably reads some smutty romance because their sex life can't be good. I mean, it possibly be good. Maybe it can. I don't know. No, no. You think <laughs> Vernon Dursley has <laughs> ever gone down on that woman? No. Come on. <laughs> he can't. Um, Vernon Dursley think... is so big that I think he would have problems not being on his. You back can and improvise. <laughs> and he, would, no, she agree. can sit on his face like she's she, perfectly she's capable. She's probably of doing very that. nimble. I mean, honestly, <laughs> she's the reason that their sex life even exists. Basically, yeah. No, she's they gotta schedule do all the work. <laughs> no, they're, no, they're British. They schedule sex night. It's once a month. <laughs> <laughs> oh christ <gasps> oh my goodness look at you oh my god it's a baby this is, this is eliza hi eliza, eliza. She, she there is a pug the there is a pug there's an excellent pug <laughs> oh my god she is so cute oh my I forget. god I forget that some pugs have both their eyes. <laughs> I know. Tank. Our friend had a, oh. a one-eyed pug that they put down. Yeah. Rest in one's peace, up. Tank. One's up. Oh. I'll drink. I'll drink to. I'll drink to that. Drink to yeah, Tank. Let's all drink <laughs> to tank. Cheers. All right. So we were talking about um the Ron phone call. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm-hmm. He screams. the The text says as if there was a football football field between them. <laughs> Because he's never used a phone before. And so Ron does the same thing my grandma does, where they don't understand that technology just takes your normal speaking voice to a different place. You don't have to, like, propel it yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so he was screaming. And then Uncle Vernon's reaction was to scream back. <laughs> Classic Vernon. <laughs> There's no Harry Potter here. <laughs> and Uncle Vernon is always so ready to fight wizards at the drop of a hat. Oh, it doesn't sure. matter. Young or old, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I don't think he would ever get big at, like, another random muggle dude, you know? He'll get, like, grumpy, like, British grumpy, like Arthur Dent. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't. Yeah, I don't see him picking a fight with a with a muggle. No, I don't. I don't see him picking a fight with another muggle dude because, like, his as a muggle dude, like his dominance is like very easy to assert. Like he doesn't have to yell because, like, he can just loom. Uh, his yeah. presence is dominance. Yeah, like yeah. he's got that mustache. He a big boy. I just mm-hmm. like. I just like couldn't. I can't take 
a man like that seriously. He was cast way too well in the movies. They did such a good job. And they did a fantastic I'm job. I'm like, oh, I thought Vernon was bad, but like, this is worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it, it really is like like living with an elephant seal. Like, that's oh. kind of what it looks like. <laughs> that's like <laughs> my the perfect God. analogy. <laughs> Oh my god. They're so big, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Have you that's ever seen like, an elephant seal in yes, real life? Like, personality wise, that's pretty spot on. Yeah, too, the personality. They just like yell at each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. like if he could have just like reared back and body slammed Hagrid and like in the shack <laughs> in the first book, I think he would have tried it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, um, well, I was gonna ask something about Uncle Vernon. Oh, well, I don't remember. Yeah, like um, Ron on the phone. Yeah, Ron on the phone. Um, so then Uncle Vernon's like, there's no Harry Potter hair, and hangs up on him, and then it's like, how fucking dare you give this phone number out? But, like, I don't know. I just, I, I know we talked about this a little bit in the last chapter yeah. of Chamber, but, like, what, Harry, what were you expecting? Like, you can't control how you answer the phone. And, like, even, like, a couple seconds later, like, or paragraphs later, he's talking about, like, well, Hermione hasn't called him either, because she clearly heard about this from Ron, which is a shame, because she was raised by Muggles and she knows how to use a fucking telephone. She would but, like, better. what would she have said? That's how would she thing. have asked for Harry without, I also, like, yeah, I also <laughs> feel like Harry's probably not even allowed to answer the phone. They don't want people to know that he's, like, there. Yeah. Haley, you had a theory when we were talking at the end of Chamber of Secrets that maybe they make Harry answer the phone, and so he's like, well, fine, I'm gonna use it then. And I I I like that theory. That was, Mm -hmm. uh, in all fairness, I was, like, partly joking, because, like, answering (laughs) the phone is, like, the absolute worst thing in the world to me. Like, I would rather die. So, like, (laughs) the fact that Harry's home life sucks so much, then, like, yeah, that makes sense to me. Like, if I was trying to torture (laughs) someone, I would force them to answer answer the phone all the time so yeah the book harry's like hermione would if she had called would have had the good sense not to say that she went to hogwarts but like how else could she possibly have he doesn't have friends anywhere else yeah yeah there's he's just he's just being sad and he's like she could have done better wrong stupid Uh, at least she i think would have like not offended like she may have even helped like a very nice, polite phone call from a delightful young lady who's, like, also a witch, you know? Like, yeah. that that may have not helped, but, like, it definitely wouldn't have been a been a right. Ron screaming match situation. <laughs> yeah. No, like, yeah. if, if they'd been older, like, she probably could have come up with a lie, like, oh, no, we're just co- we're just doing a survey or something stupid like that. Something but, like, like that. But, yeah. But again, they're, like, they're, like, 12, 13, so th- yeah, none of them, do they don't lie no good yet. Like, yeah, whenever they don't they, lie no good, and there's also yeah. no good reason to need to talk to a 13-year-old on the phone. Yeah, right. Man, yeah. when, when I was 13, I had my first flip phone, I remember, and, like, I when you typed in a phone number, it went in rainbow font, because I set it up that way, and wow. my, my friends and I, I didn't have any fucking responsibilities, not a care in the world, and I didn't do any homework, so I would just lay around in bed, and I would call a friend, and then they would call a friend, and, like, loop them in, and then we would have, like, a chain, and there would be, like, eight of us. It was, like, Zoom. <laughs> it was, like, Zoom. You were so yeah, ahead of your time. time. <laughs> so ahead of your time. And I would just spend, like, fucking hours just fucking around on the phone. Um, See, just Grace reminiscing. And I, Grace and I didn't have phones until we were, like, 15, I don't think. And even then, it was, like, one of those track pay-as-you-go phones. Yeah. Did did Tabitha get a phone a lot earlier? She did. That's the, I'm the oldest. Yeah. Yep. I'm going it out is. to the world. I gotta go exploring. I'll come back <laughs> for you, brothers. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's mostly because we didn't do any, like, extracurricular activities. So when we weren't at school, we were just home. <laughs> yeah, no, so yeah, no we don't need a phone. phone. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't get a fir- my first phone until I was, like, 14, 15. And that was yeah. literally only because I got, like... I got caught in a rainstorm, like a really bad thunderstorm, and the only way home was across, like, a dam that was, like, just in the open air, and this was during a lightning storm, so I was just, like, huddled under a tree, sobbing, like, I not where you might be during a lightning <laughs> storm. There's nowhere safe! <laughs> was this Especially a under a tree. Yes. Where the fuck is there a dam in Springfield? Uh, it, I don't know, it was, like, by a reservoir, like... I, that's crazy it was, like, it was like near burke it wasn't burke but it was near burke hmm. that's so traumatizing was it yeah. 
Oh, what well, doesn't fucking matter? Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> Haley and I grew up roundabouts the same area. Yeah, but it's also like a massive area. So, like, yes. if I tell you it was near the Friendlies, that doesn't tell you shit. <laughs> oh, the Friendlies. No, Which do you remember good? how good Friendlies felt when you were like eight? Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. It, no, because I'd been walking to Friendlies. I was like, I can walk. <laughs> it's it's three miles, but I can walk it. <laughs> I'm I gonna to get an ice cream. I went to Friendlies. <laughs> if, maybe that's why I, I think it was so good in my memory is because of like the ice cream is included situation. Dude, the the ice cream was clutch. Yeah, it was just this Honestly, huge Sunday all to yourself. <laughs> um, uh, Will and I grew up in Roanoke, and we did not have Friendlies there. It's so a hard whenever. Life. Yeah. yeah, it was really tough. Whenever we'd come and visit family up in Richmond, which is where I am now, um, I would we would like drive past Friendlies, and I'd be like, "Oh shit, I want to go to Friendlies!" <laughs> like I wanted to go there so bad, and I never got to go. So I'm really oh, sad. No, Wait, no, no I distinctly, I distinctly remember we went once with our aunt and uncle. And did I just completely forget about going to my dream restaurant? <laughs> I think you did because that was that was when our uncle. Uh, decided to give the waitress my phone number or something like that. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Okay, I, I was like, that ele- now. I was like eleven. It was the most that. uncomfortable thing. <laughs> oh, oh god! Man. I was Child's I, a trauma. I thought I remembered this, but I fact checked it before reading it aloud. But Friendlies has recently f- filed for bankruptcy, so <laughs> I was like, oh. we can take you there for your birthday, Grace. Okay, so. The Dursleys this summer have made one single concession, and it's that Harry can let Hedwig out of her cage to go max and relax, fly in the sky. But he has to promise not to send letters to his friends. And I want to know, like, what do they think they're accomplishing with that stipulation? Just uh, being dicks? Like, <laughs> shutting, uh, like shutting Hedwig up? Like, that's... Like, she... It, it's just a... They just weighed their options. Like you can either have the owl screaming all ye- all summer, or you can not have the owl screaming all summer. No, no. Like, my question is: if you're gonna let the owl go, why not let this kid literally write a fucking letter to his because friends? Because you want him to be miserable. You want, they want him to suffer. I don't understand. Mm. I guess it's like a. I don't understand why they are like so hell bent on him being miserable. They're just controlling. They're just controlling people. And, like, how hard would it be to just, like, do that anyway? Yeah, I think it's best we don't understand the mentality of the abusers. Wow, that's so true. I guess it just seems like they're not great people, but, like, rational people in all other Mm -hmm. aspects. And it's just, like... (sighs) Yeah, but, like, even rational people can be, like, super irrational about one thing. And, like, magic is their one thing that they're so super duper irrational about. But they, they let him go to fucking school. So, like, why not let him write a fucking letter? <laughs> they couldn't stop him from going to school. They tried. They did try. Uh, I don't know. What I don't understand is why Harry doesn't just write letters anyway. Yeah. Because fuck them. But, like, they can't, I don't know. They don't maybe, know. They have, maybe they have some way of enforcing it. I, it's, <laughs> who's to yeah. say? Or he's just a rule follower. No, he's not. That's, no, he's that not. sounded no. stupid as a came out. <laughs> but he is an idiot. He is an yes. idiot. We know this. Yeah. So maybe he's like, oh, no, I can't do it. It'll make them mad. Maybe he just doesn't want to risk it because, like, if they catch him writing or receiving letters, then, like, they'll make him lock Hedwig in the cage for the rest of the summer again. Yeah. And then that's bad for everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Harry finishes his homework and he stashes his books. He has, he's previously had to get these books from the cupboard under the stairs, his former bedroom where all his stuff is locked up now. Um, so <laughs> I, I love the distraction. Like it, well, not a distraction, but like the opportunity he yes. took, like the Dursleys just like loudly <laughs> talking about Uncle Vernon's new car in the front yard so the neighbors <laughs> would notice. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not even his new car. It's a company car. It's like you didn't even pay for this. No, but it's a nice car, and that's all that matters. Gaze it's upon all, us, It's all peons. about appearances. Exactly. Yeah. It's all about appearances with the Dursleys. Yeah. Ugh. 
So, because they're not supposed to know that he has his, like, books and stuff, um, he stashes his stuff under a loose floorboard in his room. He looks at the clock, and it's one in the morning. He's been 13 years old for one hour. Oh, my God. It's his can 13th I just, birthday. Can I just briefly mention, like, it mentions his uh, his luminous alarm clock, and that just jettisoned <laughs> me right back to the 90s. Remember luminous oh, yeah. alarm clocks? What do you mean by like, luminous? Like, like glow-in-the-dark alarm clocks. Um, my Amazon Alexa glows in the dark. No, I mean like glow in the dark, like like that neon green, like like the glow, like glow stars. Remember glow stars? Um, are you talking about that one alarm clock that everyone's parents had that looks like it was wood paneled, even though it wasn't? Yeah, <laughs> it was like analog, and it had like, and the back, the entire back was like glowing green, like it glowed in the dark. Yeah, yeah, I'm just showing you. I do know exactly what you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was really concerned. I thought that we'd spend too much time with Sean. You like you mean backlit? You mean Amazon Alexa? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. She always thinks I'm talking to her when I say her name. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So it's his birthday, and so he goes to gaze out the window. He's like, "Who am I?" And we get a, <laughs> a little physical description. He's got glasses and hair or whatever i didn't write any of it down because i know what harry potter looks like yeah he's got his mother's eyes if you didn't know he's got his mother's eyes oh shit does he i thought he had changed his eyes Uh, yeah not in the fucking movies every time you see him his eyes are blue 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 um but that's fine he's got green eyes he's thinking about his scar right he's an unusual boy because of a scar on his forehead the most yeah. unusual part about him. Yes, so unusual. <laughs> and then he starts thinking about Voldemort, and he's like, oh, that guy wants to kill me. And it says, Harry had to admit he was lucky even to have reached his 13th birthday. And like, yeah, bro. That's fair. <laughs> That's that is true. fair. <laughs> I'm surprised you made it this far. You've had this one guy try to murder you three times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he's just kind of gazing out the window. Who am I? What does it mean to be 13 years old? <laughs> <laughs> I am a big boy now. I'm a teenager. Um, and then he sees a weird shape flying at them. Um, and he's like, what the fuck is that? I'm sure, it doesn't say this, but I'm sure he's like, it better not be Rob fucking Weasley in a flying car. <laughs> <laughs> not again. <laughs> not again. <laughs> um, so it's three owls. It's two owls holding up a tinier owl. Okay, the small, the small owl. I don't even know if he's small, but he's definitely pathetic. It's Errol, the Weasley yeah. family owl. He yeah. literally couldn't make it. This is, I think, animal abuse to be sending him. Like, just let him chill at home. Is he just really old? Yes. Yeah, he's okay. just super duper old. They probably inherited him. Yeah. Poor Errol. He tries so hard. Yeah, and like, this isn't even that far. They better not send international mail. (laughs) (laughs) My god. Um, I mean, Errol seems almost dead at this point. Literally. He's like, (laughs) well, he recovers pretty quickly when Harry puts him in Hedwig's cage for some water and stuff, so I think it's almost like when you're running... (laughs) <laughs> and you're like I want to die and then you collapse in the grass and you're like just leave me here <laughs> but then after like a minute you're like oh no I'm okay I'm okay I'm okay I, 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 are you you reach that point I never reached that point I collapse in the grass and then I just give up and rot there like a your song I just don't even start running just, no running for me there you go yeah, yeah. that's definitely the be- the safest way to play it <laughs> Um, yeah, so Errol is being held aloft by two other owls. One of them is Hedwig, and one of them is Stranger Owl. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Stranger danger. Yeah, so my question is, like, how do these owls intersect? I like, was how going did they to ask f- that as well. How do they find each other? <laughs> That's a I would great love question. To, no, I would love to know about the secret, like, lives and, I don't know, instincts systems like uh, how how do owls know where they're going <laughs> what yeah. if I... like pigeons have like the built-in well they have like they have a homing yeah. sense yes like they always go back to the same place like yeah, that's how it's like a homing reason. pigeons work mm-hmm. yeah but like what do owls with, have yeah it, apparently they can just be told like f- 
like after after this book, sometimes Harry will send mail to Sirius, and he'll literally just tell Hedwig like, "Find Sirius," and then she's like, ah! <laughs> "He's like in the Caribbean." Yeah, but yeah. she's she's exceptionally smart, and I think owls are meant to have just a little bit more going on in this book series than they do in our world. Even though owls in our world are crazy. Remember that one day, Haley, that there was just owls everywhere. Yep, we went to like a couple different thrift stores, and there was owls everywhere. And then we went to our friend Mia's house, and I'm pretty sure we were like in the bathroom together something and there was like an owl picture on the wall and then we went outside mia's house and there was an owl on her porch in the middle of richmond yep. oh my Sweet. god yep Haley and i were like is this a blessing or a curse what's happening <laughs> <laughs> i have since seen that same owl i think that i think our neighborhood because like i live in the same neighborhood as mia for context and like i've i was like sitting out on my balcony and i saw the same fucking owl like a year ago there's an owl wow. near my house that i hear sometimes maybe I it's the same that. maybe it's just like one owl and it's just got a huge hunting territory richmond i own <laughs> all of richmond <laughs> the richmond owl <laughs> okay so what my here's my head canon is that okay. errol had it in him to get like close to harry's but like got lost and was just kind of like flying around trying to figure it out and exhausted <laughs> himself and hedwig found him in a tree and was like fuck <laughs> And tried to get him, but she couldn't do it by herself. So she just sat there and like intercepted the first owl she saw, who just happened to also be going to Harry's house. Well, I mean, like, I think Harry is the only wizard in like the the tri town area. Like, but Mrs. Fig probably gets owls sometimes. I don't know. Like she's, she's pretty, pretty disconnected. I think there's no way to know. She could have never gotten an owl. They have more advanced ways of sending messages than owls. That's true, yeah. but like also yeah. Mrs. Fig lives like three doors down from him, so like any owl that is heading anywhere near the vicinity of Privet Drive is like heading specifically toward Privet Drive, whether it's going yeah. to Harry Potter or Mrs. Fig. Yeah. Yeah. I just like to think that Hedwig found Errol and was like, ah, shit. Just like when you like find your drunk friend at a party and you're like, oh no, okay, I gotta <laughs> get you home. <laughs> Hedwig does have, like, strong uh, drunk girl at the club energy, like, mm -hmm. in terms of how helpful she is. Or, like, the, yeah. mo the mom friend. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like drunk me at the club. Yes. It's like, like <laughs> find me and we will figure it out. It's like that tree that Errol was, like, sitting in or stuck in or something became, like, the bathroom in the club. <laughs> and, like, Hedwig and Errol just became best friends right there in the tree. It was beautiful. Errol, and she just found Errol sobbing, like, I'm so useless. I can't even do it, and I'm fat. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me. You are beautiful. You are doing your best. Look I have in the nothing eyes. but faith in you. You look so sexy in that dress. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. So the owls collapse on the bed. Errol's not fucking okay. Harry takes, they're all carrying packages. So Harry takes the package off Errol, puts Errol in Hedwig's cage. He drinks some water. He's like, okay, all right. Okay. This is better now. And then the other owl is Hedwig. She's carrying a package. And then the other, oh, I said this already. The other owl is a stranger carrying a package. Okay. And they're all just in this one tiny room. <laughs> um, so it's just like a bunch of things. It's birthday time. Let's open all the presents. <laughs> so Errol brought Harry his first ever birthday card from Juan Juan. Aww. Aww. Ron is such a good friend. He yeah. truly is. You know, you. I'm sure you've heard that fan theory that the Golden Trio is like the other three houses, right? Mm -hmm. Is like is like so, and then Ron is like a Hufflepuff at heart. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's a good loyal. boy. I, I he's a good boy. It is very nice that he sent the birthday card and everything, but at the same time, it's like the majority of what the birthday card says was, "Look, look what we got to do, and look what happened to us." <laughs> he never gets to brag. It's true, <laughs> and he'll this never get time. to brag again. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Fuck. <laughs> Until he gets like lavender in book six, he literally doesn't have anything to brag about that whole fucking time. <laughs> whoa, 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 wait, 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 because I just, I just thought of this. Is Ron the first of the trio to lose his virginity? Oh, for sure. Shoot, yeah. I'm 
Yeah. I think that's because right. That's... I think Hermione, if she had been a couple years older when she was with Victor, probably would have given it up. But I think at 14, she's there's no way yeah. she's not doing that. I think she probably drew the line. And I think also <laughs> Victor Crumb would never. Like, no, yeah. he's a gentleman and a scholar. He's a gentleman exactly. and a scholar. He's like, this is, but I think for sure Ron and Lavender fuck. In all those many empty classrooms <laughs> that no one is monitoring. Just taken after Percy. Myrtle's bathroom. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Remember how, okay, in book seven, follow me here. In book seven, how Ron somehow remembered the parcel tongue for the, like, how to open the Chamber of Secrets? Yes. Do you think uh, from second year, do you think he remembered it because he'd been using it all this time to like take bitches down there and bang? I He's wish like, always. yeah, I came down here once. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Ron was that slick. Ron like stumbles no. into Lavender Brown. Like it's, yeah. it's through no, through no <laughs> like endeavor of his own. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. That's like doubly so in the movies. You can see her like homing in on him. She's like, "I'm gonna make out with you." Yep, she, she got. She's eyes. on the hunt. Yeah, <laughs> everyone shits on Lavender Brown, but I love her. She's not afraid to be herself. I respect her. I just always like hated her name. I'm like, your name's just colors, dude. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I've always been like, I'm gonna, if I ever have a daughter, I'm gonna name her Lavender. <laughs> laugh, 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 laugh. <laughs> Which in my linguistics brain is just like wash, wash. Yeah. Like, doesn't lav? Doesn't that prefix mean wash? I think yeah. so. Yes, it does. Lavatory. Yeah. Okay, so Ron's letter is just a brag. Um, yeah, he, he's like, but it's like you feel happy for them. So the yeah. Weasley family won basically the lottery. It's the Daily Profit Grand Prize Galleon draw. So they won what was it, seven hundred galleons? Yeah, a lot yeah. of galleons. Mm-hmm. Um, and they used the money to take the family to Egypt to visit Bill, which makes me really happy because I feel like they could have used it on much lamer things. But they used it to do like one really big special thing for the whole family and like yeah, get no, everyone together. Like, treat Classic yourself. Reasons. Yeah, treat so, yourself. Like, so like, hold on. Hold on one damn second. <laughs> so in Chamber of Secrets, weren't they just, didn't they just go to Egypt? Oh. I they weren't able to take all the kids. The parents, they couldn't take yeah. all the kids. Yeah, they couldn't take all the kids. So maybe... Yeah, maybe they're just taking the opportunity to scoop up all the kids and take them to Egypt now. Yeah, but I also no. feel like I feel like the Weasleys could have used that money for something better slash different. Or go visit Charlie in Romania. That would be cool. Egypt has a lot more cool stuff than Romania. Yeah, that's I true. I that feel like when true. I feel like when mom and dad Weasley went to visit uh Phil, like, last time, they were, like, sleeping on his couch, and it was kind of weird. At this time, they were like, okay, we can afford a hotel this time. Meanwhile, like, visiting Charlie in Romania is like, I'm in the woods, I live in a commune, everyone walks around naked. Yeah, he does for sure live in a commune. There's a lot of exhibitionism (laughs) going on. I do not want my parents here. We want to be like the dragons. We are all naked all the time. Look me in my eyes and tell me that Charlie Weasley does not micro-brew. Yeah. Oh, he absolutely does. <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like he grows his own, um, like, psychedelic mushrooms. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, doesn't wear clothes. So liberated. Charlie Weasley. <laughs> ideal man. He is the yeah. ideal man, I think. <laughs> like, I think Bill is more realistic if you want, like, a, like a, like a family and a house and a life and, like, a steady paycheck. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, but, like, nice. that's not what I want. So, like, Charlie is my ideal man. <laughs> A nice cottage someday, maybe. Oh, cottage by the sea. How dare you? (laughs) So we also learned in Ron's letter that the the Weasleys bought him a new wand. Thank fucking God. Because if if Hogwarts doesn't keep canceling exams like they've been doing, he's never going to make it out alive. (laughs) He's fucked. Yeah. And then there's a picture of the whole family, including... One scabbers the rat. It mm-hmm, says specifically mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. motherfucker. That motherfucker. Oh, yeah. You should have left him there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A plague. Because <laughs> they're in Egypt, you know where the biblical plagues are. Yeah, yep. Just that's like good. One good job. Single rat. <laughs> um. Yeah. There he is. Oh yeah. And so this is the same cutting that Sirius Black gets, right? And yep. Right. In 
Azkaban. Yes, it is. He knows that fucking rat. He busts out. I got a new phone yesterday, and my old phone knew all the Harry Potter words really well. If I type chamber, it was like of secrets. If I type prisoner, it was like of Azkaban. And now I type in Azkaban, and it's like, do you mean Azerbaijan? And I'm like, no. (laughs) (laughs) It's, It's different. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azerbaijan. <laughs> it is my That's favorite true. country name in the world. That's a cool, it's a good, cool it country is a good name. Um, yeah. But it is not um, part of this book series, and my phone needs to step up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so then in Ron's letter, he apologizes for the phone call. Ha ha ha. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, he asks Harry to meet him in Diagon Alley before school so that they can get their school stuff and hang out a little bit. Um, and then the PS says that Percy is head boy. And I'm pretty sure it literally just says um, PS Percy is head boy with like absolutely no emotion whatsoever. No, it's literally, <laughs> I'm looking letter, at yeah. yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Percy's head boy. He got the letter last week. <laughs> <Period>. <laughs> yes. Just facts. You can like hear the resentment. In his voice. Oh, this is how I write, like, when I'm really grumpy at someone in an email. Like, if I am not, if I am not, like, couching my words or being, like, really cheerful, I'm like, sure. <laughs> and so Ron also sent Harry a present. It is, it looks like a little top, a spinning top, like the so end like of Inception. Inception? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's- Immediately what I thought of. Uh, millennials have no other concept for what the fuck a top is. <laughs> I just um, keep thinking like dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I miss yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dreidels are cool because if you play it right, you get chocolate. That's hey. true. It's a plus. And so this device is a Sneakoscope, which is annoyingly capitalized. I don't know if that's a brand name. I feel like JK Rowling kind of capitalizes stuff too much sometimes. She's like, this is important. Yeah, pay attention. She, she, yeah, she capitalizes out of importance as opposed to if something actually needs to be capitalized. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so a sneakoscope, if someone untrustworthy is around, it's supposed to light up and spin. Uh-huh. And I'm pretty sure that this is the one where Harry all year long thinks it is malfunctioning. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there some untrustworthy rat lying around? I mean, the entire time? I smell all right. Perhaps. So next, we move to Hedwig, um, who brought stuff from Hermione. I love this so much because Hedwig just showed up at Hermione's <laughs> house. I'm literally Hedwig is smart enough to be like, we're assuming Harry needs a birthday present, and you are the most responsible friend, and I know you will get one to him. So I am here to collect his birthday present. <laughs> yeah, I really love the like Hermione Hedwig duo. I feel I like they're just be, both awesome. Yeah, they'd be great together as a team, you know? Yeah. yeah. Just, like, yeah. so pure. Like, these, and, like, these two letters also, like, from Ron and Hermione are, I think, part of what makes me like this chapter so much more than I like the first chapter of Chamber of Secrets, because Chamber of Secrets is literally just, like, Harry grumping about, like, my friends aren't talking to me. Yeah. But, like, yeah. this is, like, oh, like, if you haven't, you know, if you haven't read the other books, which, like, of course you have, but if you haven't, like, this is... This is an excellent introduction to both of them. Yeah. yeah. Their personalities, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> the way Hermione talks, is just, like, her letter is <laughs> breathless, you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to when you said Hedwig and Hermione would make a good duo, I, I, I've i been thinking about that in the 10 seconds since you said it, <laughs> and I, I think that's, like, why Hermione had to have a Crookshanks, because so much about Hermione is, like, so obnoxiously perfect she's like Mm -hmm. a bit of a mary sue just like can do no wrong write about everything and i think that her having a cats make people irrational speak to (laughs) any dog person about a cat person's cats my art mary payton is constantly teasing me about my cats (laughs) and they i mean one of my cats made me bleed a lot this week because we got in a fight it was very dramatic. We went, oh to a fr- gosh. we went to a friend's house. He didn't like it, but I'm still like, my little baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Even very rational people can be extremely irrational <laughs> about one thing. Yeah, cats is <laughs> that. Cats is that one irrational thing for a lot of people, I think. So I think it's yeah. a great character building thing that Hermione has this just truly god-awful cat. <laughs> yeah, I love it. 
So Hermione, in her letter, she's talking. She We learned she's gotten a subscription to the Daily Prophet, which is a thing that comes up um, throughout the next several books. I definitely well, remember. So, so that's actually kind of interesting because she mentions here that she's getting the Daily Prophet. And then, like, book four, she takes out, like, a regular subscription. So I guess she stops having it delivered or she only has it delivered over the summer because like throughout book four, she gets like the reason that she gives for getting the subscription is because she was sick of finding everything out from the Slytherins. Oh yeah. I do actually remember that. Ugh. We'll have they to keep see getting, how that plays out. Yeah, because they keep getting news from like just literally seeing Draco Malfoy play acting shit across is, the Great Hall. Isn't that um, book five? No, it's book four. With because Rita that's Skeeter. when, yeah, that's the whole like Rita Skeeter Rita thing. Like Harry Skeeter. keeps having like articles and then, written about him and shit. And then it's good because then in book five, that's when the real propaganda begins. Yes. Ugh, ugh, ugh. This is the last book where we get to have any fucking fun without the existential dread. <laughs> I think this is that's why this is a lot of people's favorite book. Yeah, it's like yeah. our last like taste of youth. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah, and I think I think that Sirius Black is one of the most well loved characters in the entire. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think love that's Sirius true. So yeah, much. yeah, and in Chamber, I mean, in Goblet of Fire, he's kind of I think annoying is a strong word, but he's just kind of I don't know. He's like a nuisance a little bit. He's like he's like grumpy and he's like bored and he's like not really helping Harry with any of the things he needs help with. Yeah. So, but in this one it's like such a beautiful twist. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful <laughs> series twist. is good actually. <laughs> what? <laughs> and the most memeable character in terms of are you serious? Hey. <laughs> No, you just uh, know that, like, James and Remus were both fucking insufferable about that throughout their entire childhood. Oof. It's true. Yikes. I'm sure that's so true. <laughs> well, I can hear your webcam, like, adjusting. It, it sounds like it's from Star Wars. It, like, goes out of focus, and then it's like, boop, 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 and it, like, goes back in focus. Does it make a noise? <laughs> yeah, it does. It's not, like, annoying. It's just really funny. It's, like, yeah. it's, no, like, you ever it's seen literally it? Star Wars noise. <laughs> no, it, it, I mean, it kind of reminds me of, like, Jason Bond movies, or Jason Bourne, sorry, Jesus. James uh, like, Bond are you trying or to Jason say James Bourne? Bourne? I'm really not sure. <laughs> They're the same thing! <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah, like... As long as it's Matt Damon, that's all I care about. Right? But, like, you know, just, like, spies and fucking s snipers and shit with, like, their little cameras <laughs> that zoom in on yeah, stuff, yeah, and they're, like, what it sounds someone's like. on a roof, it's like... Bleh! <laughs> I didn't even connect that that was what I was hearing. But that's so, so unnecessary. Why does it make a noise? <laughs> Sci-fi reasons. Hermione goes on to talk about school. That's mm -hmm. fun. She's in um, France right now. That's in cool. France. That's just how Europe people be. Everyone's on vacation except uh -huh. for Harry. Yeah. And the Dursleys <clears throat> never go on vacation either. And I wonder if like... No, they go on vacation, just not with him. Oh, because he stays with Mrs. Fig. Yeah. But they... Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, I stand corrected. Um, <laughs> and then also Hermione is like, Ron's vacation sounds very educational. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so yep. she also asks him to meet in London. It makes me think that Ron and Hermione have been having, like, ongoing correspondence, you know? That's I mean, how, probably. That's how Harry knows that he's like, they have another group chat that's between <laughs> them. And Harry is left out a lot of the time. And yeah, we've true. talked before about like, I th about the ways in which we, as the reader, don't get to see Ron and Hermione's friendship and it's like day to day because Harry... What am I trying to say? When I mean, when he's there, it's like the trio. But a lot of the times, he's not there. Um, yeah. And like they they have like this whole relationship that we never get to see. And I think that getting to see that would convince some of the Hermione Ron naysayers. You know what I mean? I think yeah. that they really complement each other in a way that the films simply obliterate, and that the books don't really get the opportunity to show as much as is truly there. Yeah, there is a lot yeah. more subtext in the book and like Ron's character, honestly Ron and Hermione's characters are both 
completely different in the books from what they are in the movies. Yeah. Like, yeah. they're both they're both so much more middle of the road than, like, well, the kind of caricatures of themselves that are presented exactly, in the movies. I was gonna exactly use the word caricature. Yeah. 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 I feel and, like anyone who's, like, a Harry Hermione shipper is, oh. like, they, they've only watched the movies. Oh, yeah. And they haven't the read the books. The books. Yeah. I think that's true, and I also think that those people are the kind of people who truly, to their core, feel like people who are attracted to opposite gender who are opposite gender can't be friends. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. truly, mm-hmm. I truly oh, think yeah. that it's like they spend so much time together. They're such a great team, and it's like that's not no, like, that's, that's, super that's not true. the point. Yeah, yeah. No, like yeah. the thing with Hermione and Ron is like they both have very chaotic energies in very complementary ways. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's why Harry and Hermione wouldn't have ever really worked together, just because personality-wise, I feel like she and Ron work better together because of their energies, as well as the fact that like Harry and Ron or Harry and Hermione are just so platonic with their friendship. I feel yeah. like their friendship is so strong that they couldn't ever do anything to to hurt it. Yeah, right. I kind of imagine a grown Hermione and Ron as kind of a Molly Arthur dynamic, you know? A little yeah. bit. Just like, I always see you guys fighting, but I know that you love every fucking second of it. <laughs> like, this is, oh, this is your foreplay and it's getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like I shouldn't be in the same room with you right now. <laughs> and, and in this chapter in particular... Imagine being 13 years old and getting a summer's worth of handwritten letters from Ron Weasley, who, like, usually can't even be fucked, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Uh, Anyway, so, and then (laughs) then Hermione is like, oh, yeah, Percy is head boy. Ron doesn't seem very happy about it. It was starting to remind me of, like, my family grapevine, where my mom texts me and is like, hey, just so you know, like, this thing happened. And then my dad called me and was like did you hear that this thing happened and then i call my grandma and she's like she's like christina i don't know if you've heard that this thing happened and i'm like oh you guys we need a group text you're so annoying (laughs) (laughs) um yeah and so her present hermione's present for harry is uh he is like this is a book because it's heavy which i really i relate to that i whenever i give anyone a gift or whenever i receive any gift it's like, that's a book. Mm-hmm. Heavy yeah. rectangular. <laughs> I know what this is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, no, it's a broomstick servicing kit. And that's awesome. Hermione's awesome. Hermione has such strong social skills after book yeah. one. She really knows exactly the right thing to do and to say. She's not going to get Harry a book, dude. She's not an idiot. He doesn't yeah. want a book. <laughs> <laughs> Although she later gets him... A Quidditch book, though. Well, but she that's gets him, something he would like. Yeah, she gets him books of like things that he's interested. In. Like she gets him a Quidditch book. I think at one point she gets him like a Defense Against the Dark Arts book. It's like, oh, Harry would like this. Like, there's even a book in the broom- broomstick servicing kit. But the thing is, Harry really fucking enjoys that book. It becomes a plot device in the next couple chapters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like she gets him books like Quidditch books that like she wouldn't ordinarily buy for herself just because she knows. That Harry would love it. Yeah, she's like, eh, this looks like sports ball. There we go. <laughs> I feel like Hermione <laughs> would read these books, though, so they can talk about it, you know? Yeah. Aww. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I mean, she will watch Quidditch. Like, she's a good friend like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, and then we get a little recap of what the fuck is Quidditch. Classic. We had to, we, Hermione had to give this gift so that J.K. Rowling, <laughs> that bitch, could tell us all about Quidditch. I, I do feel like uh, that bitch describing the Nimbus 2000 as Harry's quote, most prized possession is like a little bit of foreshadowing to the fact that it's about to die <gasps> later on in the yep. book. No, yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking the same thing. Like, um, mm-hmm. like I said earlier, this chapter just does a really good job. You know, it, it does info dump a lot of the like, Harry was a special boy, but like, it does a much <laughs> better job of, uh, setting up like everything that is going to be important. Like, all right, we've got the do it yourself, uh, broom care kit like that's going to be a thing later we've got the uh, nimbus 2000 we've got scabbers let's fucking go we've got the monster mm-hmm. book of monsters yeah oh yeah. yeah uh speaking of which the last package i wrote parcel that's not something that's in my normal vocabulary but that's how the 
British say it. Um, it's from Hagrid, and so far Harry has been reading the letter and then moving on to the gift, but the gift, mm-hmm. when he picks it up, uh, quivers, which <laughs> is a word that we as editors have agreed is not okay outside of a romance novel or a scene that involves shooting a bow and arrow. <laughs> Legolas is allowed a quiver and um <laughs> Reginald is allowed a quivering <laughs> member but other than that <laughs> thank you Haley. I was trying so hard to I was like what is a name that people will know is a Roman ensemble name <laughs> no no I, I, I'm pretty sure I got that line that's from verbatim 10 things from 10 things, things I hate about you yes. and I'm gonna add a clip right here <laughs> yep I'll let you get back to Reginald's quivering member quivering member I like that <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, it quivers. Um. <laughs> Sounds so uncomfortable saying it. <laughs> Quivering. Um, <clears throat> so we, we get a little bit of perspective, and this is this is what, like you were saying, Haley, instant characterization of Hagrid because it's like this is from Hagrid. The package is twitching. <laughs> that tracks. He likes weird animals. Yep. So Harry opens it, slashed it, tears its way out of the womb. <laughs> tears its way out. It is the monster book of monsters, and it scuttles away from him like some weird crab. That is how it's described. <laughs> I hate it so much. Um, yeah, it bite and it bites him. <laughs> such a bad idea. It's such a bad idea. Conceptually, it's a terrible like, how are you going to market this? Like, but I feel like, like Go ahead. It's like perfect Hagrid though. Like it's of course that's what he would have given Harry. Oh, for it's his perfect book. Hagrid, but like who <laughs> published this? That's what I was gonna oh, say, is I feel like fair. Hagrid self-published this i feel like he <laughs> wrote it he's like wow. this is this is gonna be a good book guys yeah, everyone's like, gonna love this, this book. is gonna be hilarious <laughs> so harry very intelligently he has his moments he belts it shut okay all right okay he, he's pretty resourceful de- pretty resourceful he's desperate for the dursleys to not wake up and take everything and ruin his life this and is so it. like like, this is another thing that the movie just fucking kills, because, like, in the movie, yeah. he gets the book in the leaky cauldron, the and leaky so, cauldron. like, there's this whole knockdown drag out with the book, but with this, he, like, it's, jumps like, on it. it's so much more stressful here, because you've got Uncle Vernon, like, grunting next door, and it's like, oh, God, oh, God, stay quiet. Ugh. Uh, I was having flashbacks to last book when Dobby was making all the noise and everything. I was so stressed and it was taking me right back to that. And I I hate it. I hate that. What what I want to know is, does Uncle Vernon have a CPAP machine for sleep apnea? Because (laughs) I can guarantee he has sleep apnea. Now I'm going to leave in all the, I usually cut out me trying to butt into a conversation and failing, but now I'm going to leave it in because that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Big ass masks that are hella loud and super uncomfortable. <laughs> so like um, you can sleep through like anything with that. You can make so yeah. much noise. I recently sure, yeah. watched, um, I recently watched. <laughs> um, that fucking movie Wine Country starring every woman who's ever been on Saturday Night Live. It's like a hilarious <laughs> w- celebration of female friendship. And um, Amy Poehler in that movie is like so cute and hot. And she she uses a CPAP machine and she sleeps with this hot young guy and they like fuck and then they fall asleep and then when they wake up she has her CPAP machine. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking funny. <laughs> Maybe that'll be my plug. I was unsure what I was going to plug in this episode. <laughs> so now that the Monster Book of Monsters is belted shut, um, Harry can safely move on to the letter, which made me so mad. It's just like, happy birthday. Thought you might find this useful for next year. Won't say no more. Tell you when I see you. God couldn't fucking say, damn it. Couldn't say, just stroke its spine. And, and you'll all. maybe survive. <laughs> <laughs> So fucking annoying, dude. How many like parents <laughs> do you think? I mean, like if I if I was shopping for my kids' school books and we had to get one of these, I'd be like, 
uh, I need to talk to somebody about this. <laughs> well, I mean, remember when they go to Diagon Alley and they, like, Ron and Hermione are trying to buy their copies and the dude in the store is, like, fucking Hogwarts and he's got, like, a bat <laughs> for them to, like, get them back because they're in a cage? Yes, yes. Um, actual night. I mean, I'm surprised they stocked that book. They probably didn't know what it was until it arrived. I mean, considering, well, considering what, like, the pu- wizard publishing industry is apparently like, <laughs> like, they just have to take their lives in their hands, because remember the fucking Invisible Book of Invisibility? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, that's what, I think that's mentioned in the same chapter. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, fuck that book. <laughs> God, imagine being a wizard publisher. No, yeah, I don't want I can't. to. No, thank you. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day... Maybe one day we should do a bonus episode where we um, like build a fake publishing company that is like the wizard and like how would they submit and like how yeah. would you do X Y Z? Ghost <laughs> paper like- for ghost books. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I am never like going to let would- ghost paper go. <laughs> That would just be for us. No one would give a fuck about that. Wow, that's so uh, true. I'm going to probably skip that episode. Uh, <laughs> it's like Subscribe the worst, to our Patreon. The worst role play of your life. I listen to this fantasy podcast called Hello from the Magic Tavern, and it's like basically D&D. And then, but like in their world, they play a game called Offices and Bosses, where they oh. role play as just like us. <laughs> oh my god. What? And it's like, it's like, my name's Michael. I'm. A, I just said Michael because that's the first name that came to mind. I'm a te- temporary. My skills are small talk and like printing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, hey. where are we? Okay, so then, so beautiful. I almost wept. Harry puts all three of his birthday cards in a little row, and he's just so fucking happy. Oh, oh wait, wait. We skipped the um we skipped the Hogsmeade the Mc- Mc- McGonagall letter. Yeah, the oh, yeah. Hogsmeade permission slip. Doesn't he get to that after that? No. Well, then I was reading in a weird order. Slash my notes. No, he does order. put them all in the line or whatever, and then he opens He's like, the to, business. He opens to the, business. The thicker the than, than the usual letter. My notes are in the right order, okay. Okay, but You're he's not great. like, he's not having his, like, moment of reflection yet. Okay, but he's just happy. I think it just says he grins. Okay, he's happy. Yes, he's made grinning me happy. broadly. <laughs> made me happy. Broadly. <laughs> um, he then opens the Hogwarts letter, barring uh, it's like, this is what you need, come to school don't forget, you have to go to school and then it includes something new this year, it includes a Hogsmeade permission form, um, mm-hmm. there's like this town near Hogwarts called Hogsmeade and the third years and above can go but they need a signed permission form frankly, incredibly <laughs> responsible move for Hogwarts but do they need a permission form because of the fact that they can get butterbeer and like other beverages there or like what's the reasoning for needing a permission form for hogs i guess because it's like off grounds and like when you're in grounds hogwarts has certain enchantments protecting it or liabilities Mm. like just you know if you get injured at hogwarts like you're in hogwarts what do you expect but if you get injured in hogsmeade then like (laughs) madame rosmerta is like well now i'm gonna fucking sue you for psychological damages oh yeah that's where they draw the line. <laughs> you can only get injured at Hogwarts. That's it. <laughs> that flashed me to Katie Bell getting cursed in books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that was probably a legal nightmare. But that doesn't manifest until she's at least out of the three broomsticks. I don't know if she's all the way onto Hogwarts territory. Yeah, it's Property. kind of a middle ground. Property is the word for that. It's, it grounds? <laughs> I don't know. Campus. Wait, doesn't um <laughs> Grace, does not UVA call it the grounds? Yeah, yes. Yes, it does. Who, With who a capital you, G. It's a capital G. Are? Yeah. Who, who I don't know. <laughs> We're <laughs> Mr. Jefferson's <laughs> University, Christina. I'm sorry. Oh are you talking about the university? I forgot that uh, Haley um, edited a book once about UVA and is really traumatized now. <laughs> yeah, so I am sorry. deeply. She I'm really, really right now. <laughs> I didn't make the rules. Terrible. I didn't it's make the miserable. rules. Grace, like, I just go here, like, leave me alone. <laughs> Honestly, I was a transfer. Great. Let's just get that out yeah. of the way. We, tra- we transferred as third years. It didn't mean anything. Third years! When I was a third year, I called myself a junior. And then the next year, I called myself a senior. And then the next year, I called myself a senior again. <laughs> although, although Grace, when Grace and I were there for our first semester, we did take a uh, comparative literature course together. Oh, just, we did. Just for fun. It just was cute. Fun. 
That is yeah, I kept doing better than her on all the papers. And oh, that's, that is that is absolutely not true. <laughs> what, is, what exactly about it was comparative? Like, what does that mean? You compared stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Is it like I, I took a class remember. called... I took a class we called did, Critical did, Theory. Is that I, like I, what I, it was? I feel like we mm-hmm. read, like... The, did we read the Iliad and the Odyssey? Yeah, it was all those, like, you know... All those types of books. Oh, <laughs> I read those in uh, high Oedipus, school. you know. <laughs> my, my, <laughs> high, Oedipus, my high school English class, instead of reading Moby Dick, we just watched the movie. So There's while, a movie? My, while my English teacher brought his banjo into class and played music for us, <laughs> it was <laughs> the hot. best. Um, Steve Martin did this weird thing in my brain where now I think banjos are hot. Wait, I have to text my girl group because we were talking about old dudes we had fucked the other day and I totally forgot about Steve, Steve Martin. Steve, Steve Martin is uh, at the top of the list. What are you talking about? Oh my god. Yeah, I'm... who did you say before Steve Martin? Hugh Laurie would be up there. We started with dudes over 50 and then we progressed to dudes over 80, which was a little harder. Oh, but wow. dudes over 50, I said Antonio Actually, less Benders. hard, Christina. Less hard. <laughs> 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 oh, my little new phone doesn't know the word fuck yet. Mine is still in the ducks. So. Yeah, duck. <laughs> Oh, my fu- my phones learn the word fuck real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta train them. I literally, the last thing, <laughs> the last thing I said to the girl group, this is what we do with first chapter episodes because they're so boring. Um, the last <laughs> thing I said to my girl group is my friend, we were talking about COVID tests and my friend was like, it doesn't hurt. It's just really uncomfortable. And I said, like a pap smear. And she was like, oh my God, it's exactly like a pap smear. <laughs> it kind of <laughs> is. I'll have you know, I have done a handful of pap smears. Probably not the best term to describe that. You haven't um, but... told anyone yet that you are in medical training? <laughs> I'm not Actually, in medical training, I just sneak in there to do them. Um, <laughs> what? Well, that's his kink. <laughs> oh my god! But, uh, please, he's in training to be a doctor. Please. I've, I've ha- yeah, I'm. I'm Someone I'm, save I'm, us! I'm in the, my fourth year of med- medical school, about to go into residency. I'm Hell about yeah. to be a doctor. I've passed all Whoa. my exams to be a doctor. I just need to finish rotations at this point. Or I'm very but, proud of you. Almost, Doctor Ball. Thanks. Doctor thanks. Thanks yes. uh, um, <laughs> Ball is on the ball. Almost, <laughs> Doctor William. <laughs> Um, Baby doctor, you haven't explained that. I've had nothing but compliments on my pap smears. So. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! <laughs> How <laughs> dare you? Here. Well, all I can think is my pap smear brings all the girls to the yard. Now. <laughs> it's better than yours. <laughs> no one is happy. No one is happy in the room when a pap smear is going on. You know what? I've never encountered a man who could throw anything into a pap smear conversation, and I respect that. Will. Thank you. I appreciate it. it. You really bring a lot to the table at this podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, did I send this text? Let me make sure, and then we'll get back to the Yep. Steve I did. Martin, don't forget. <laughs> okay, perfect. Very important. <laughs> okay. So. Real, real quick though, I'm sorry. Yes, no, who no. was in, who was in your "I'd fuck over 80" category? Is what? Oh, I'm good on. question. I gotta go back in time. My friend Mia said, um, "Willem." No, um... Willem Dafoe? Is he... He's not that old. Hold on. Who are we saying? He can't Give be me, over 80. I gotta go way back in time. They were talking about happy hour for a long time. Let me see. I said, do you want to go camping? Um... <laughs> oh, we did say Willem Dafoe, but he was in the 50-plus category. Uh, that makes um, sense. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> um... <laughs> oh, we talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> The fact that you can't remember off the top of your Wait head a says second. a lot, I feel like. Okay, all right. You can't just spout it out like... Is Patrick Stewart over 80? Yes, I'm um, pretty sure he is. Yeah. He, I wouldn't fuck him because I just would, I would taint him. <laughs> you know? He's just like so pure. He is a, he's a very pure human being, for sure. He's pure. He's pure. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, wait. I found it. I found it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to edit out a lot of that search. You guys are so Perfect. patient. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Um, first answer, Brad Pitt, I guess. This isn't me. These are just all my hoe friends. And I was okay. like, ugh, boring. Um, okay. Some of the 80 plus, Michael Caine. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's, I okay. respect that. I respect um, that. Yeah. Someone said William Shatner. He can't be over 80, right? 
I think no. he probably might I think be. He, I think he you is. Think so? I think he's cl- he's close. Wow. I I did. I personally didn't answer the over eighty question. I answered over fifty, and I said Antonio Bandati. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. And the reason I call him that is because my first introduction to him was Spy Kids, and I was like, "That dad's hot." He is very daddy in that movie. So good. True. That's true. Well, um, daddy, daddy Biden is almost over eighty, so he's getting close. Uh, mm. I don't know if I'd fuck that guy. Mm. I, don't I don't know. know. Have you seen? He looks good with a beard. Jill Bi- so here's the thing: Have you seen Jill Biden? That is a woman who gets dick down on the regular. You're right, and I would fuck Doctor Biden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And you know what? Like, I like you know, I'd fuck, I'd fuck a president Biden. Just <laughs> thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, William Shatner is eighty nine years old. What? What? Jesus 89. Christ! That can't be right. Shut. But up, he just looked yeah. it up. The internet doesn't lie. Did. Google's Ever. Google's true. <laughs> wow. All the time. Wow. Wow. I am shooketh. <laughs> Oh God! Okay, well we're at the end of the chapter. Harry's like, "How am I going to get the Dursleys to sign this permission form?" And then he just like gazes out the window again, or whatever. Who am I? (laughs) Who am I? (laughs) It says the chapter ends with extremely unusual, though he was at that moment. Harry Potter felt just like everyone else, glad for the first time that it was his birthday. (laughs) Harry boy, Harry my boy, oh little guy. We got to the end of the chapter. Here's my final note. The series has a lot of H names. Harry, Hagrid, Harry. Hedwig, Hermione, Hagrid, Hogwarts, Hufflepuff. Helena, Ravenclaw. Yeah, <sighs> Hufflepuff. Wait, Helga Helena, Hufflepuff. Helga Hufflepuff. Helga Hufflepuff. There is a Helena Raven. Oh, it's Rowan. Wait, there's Rowena. a Helena. Her I think daughter a- is Helena. Helena Bonham Carter. Oh, oh! So bad. I've always thought Helena was a beautiful name, and before I even heard the My Chemical Romance song, it was from um, a Midsummer Night's Dream. And I think I've already said I would name my daughter Lavender Brown in this episode, but I would really name her <laughs> Helena. And also, It'd I'm not going to have kids. <laughs> Helena Lavender. <laughs> that's a oh, Helena Lavender lot. right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. Um, and then there's that angsty My Chemical Romance song about Helena. It's a, it's just a lovely name. I think the letter H is like kind of like Anglo-Saxon, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think like I, I think a lot of languages kind of like have the H sound but don't consider it like a sound. It's just like a breath you s- take before saying another like vowel. We call it uh in English we call it a glottal fricative, which means oh. that your glo- your glottis be like <sighs> <laughs> oh yeah that's a glow <laughs> like that, right that noise you need with a uh, with a sleep apnea machine <laughs> <laughs> and that's it it's come full circle we're done here hey. let's, let's get out of here <laughs> i'll post again does anyone else have anything to say about this chapter no but i'm excited about this book I, well that's what i was gonna you- say I have a question. Okay. Uh, oh. Just as a as a follow up, um, is Percy head boy? <laughs> uh, yeah, and Ron doesn't seem very happy about it. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> I almost expected Hagrid's letter to have a PS. That's like I don't know. Who <laughs> yes. Percy Weasley's head boy. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> um, I did kind of note, uh, kind of for the first time in Ron's letter when he's talking about uh, Egypt and like what they're up to that like one of the tombs Mrs. Weasley wouldn't let Ginny into because it was full of like fucked up skeletons. And I was oh, like, oh, that, that probably has something to do with last year. Probably yeah. her trauma. Yeah, because there was like a whole thing painted on the wall that like Ginny was <gasps> mind controlled into writing about how her skeleton would lie in the chamber forever. Wow. So I, I feel like that. Yeah, I feel like that might be like Mrs. Weasley's trauma. Yeah, I just read that as a gender thing. Like my baby girl but well, I mean, like I, not necessarily gender. Right. She's just the youngest. Yeah, I think you're right. I know, but she's only like one year younger. You know, she has like, been through a lot. That's true. But yeah, like, I yeah, think she did you're go right, through Haley, a lot that last it's, year. It's Molly Weasley is like no skeletons. No, no, it's like it's like my mom with crocodiles. Like, oh uh, yeah, <laughs> like it's, for, it's, alliga- okay. it's alligators. No, it was either. She. It doesn't matter. But her uh, dream was in Florida. Now you have her to dream tell was the story in, of the dream. So, 
I, my mother, uh, we were almost moved to uh, Florida for army reasons. And my mother had a dream uh, that we went on like a swamp tour and I got eaten by crocodiles slash alligators. Like she, she didn't <laughs> it's, really it's watch. It's alligators if it's in Florida. I did, uh, no, they have both. It's just that like only Florida has alligators. Do you, but they do also have say. crocodiles. Do you guys know the actual difference between alligators and crocodiles? Yeah, I know the difference. Dicks. And it's that alligators live in fucking Florida and yeah. crocodiles no, that live is in Egypt. N- not actually true. No, crocodiles um, live everywhere, but alligators only really live in Florida, right? Again, again, that is not accurate. Fact. Oh god. Um, Are you gonna try it, and make a it, joke? When it comes <laughs> <laughs> Uh uh-huh. damn it grace <laughs> um as it as it turns out um uh you will actually see uh alligators later and you will see crocodiles after a while <laughs> oh that's true oh that's my God. Damn it. shut the fuck up <laughs> wait Haley, i you know that i am so eager to answer with the wrong answer just right away <laughs> my favorite thing to do it just says the Americas, so I'm not quite buying it yet. Fuck's sake. Uh, <laughs> anyway, my mother had a dream that I was eaten by a large reptile. And okay. so, like, and then we didn't end up moving to Florida, but, like, she always had, like, she just always had this weird phobia about me anywhere near swamps. And then we went to Florida for Brooke's uh, bachelorette party, and we went on an Everglades tour, and we saw alligators. And I was just like, no one tell my mom. And then I was so guilt-ridden that I had to tell my mom. And, like, she... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, 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 they're they're not that big. Alligators aren't as big as you think they are. They're, you're thinking of crocodiles. They're huge and they eat people and alligators don't eat people. Alligators are only like five to nine feet long. It, like they're, so, And like most of that is a tail. Like they're kind of the size of a dog and then like there's just a lot of tail. So that's <laughs> the context there. So palustrophobia is actually the fear of things found in swamps. So... Hmm. Might be what you're. What about is. bogs? Are we scared of things? Oh, found in what about witches found in bogs? Is what I'm, I'm not afraid of things found in swamps, but maybe I am because I was about to say. But like, it's it's like that, like two feet of like pluff mud that it's like not water or earth. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that's what, what is it? I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan. <laughs> Yeah, so how do y'all feel reading this first chapter? For me, personally, every first chapter kind of gives me that, like, warm, comfy feeling. Well, until fucking Goblet of Fire. That was not warm and comfy at all. <laughs> no, yeah. it was the opposite. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, I think this one was definitely, I liked it better than the, the first chapter of the second book. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like it was a lot more, like, it was still introductory, which I feel like, that bitch has to do with almost every chapter of like mm-hmm. reacclimating for people who, for some reason, would start on this book instead of starting on the first or yeah. second book. Um, but I do appreciate the nuances of like hinting at what's going to happen later on in this book. Yeah. That, like, yeah. of course, you don't know until like, you finish we, reading we the book, know. but we do know. <laughs> yep. So. <laughs> Yeah, I think that by the time we get to books like five and six, she's like, if you're starting here, you're already be- going to be confused about it. Yeah, you're on your fucking own. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Read I the don't Sparks care anymore. <laughs> My editor kept telling me for the first three, like, no, we have to consider that maybe some people didn't pick up. But like, no, by four and five, it's like, fuck you. Well, Brooke mentioned when we were talking about Chamber of Secrets that like, it's like she got that bitch probably got a deal for the first book and it did. I And then she probably got a deal for the second book. And then and then they probably were like, let's do a trilogy. And like, you know what I mean? I feel like they kept testing the waters. And then after the, I personally, when, when I first started reading this books, I got the trilogy as a box set, which I don't think is even a thing anymore that you can literally get. No, typically it was the first four as a box set, not the first three. I got the first, the fourth one hadn't come out yet when I started reading. Damn, I got the first three as a box set. You. And so I think that like after the trilogy, I think it really started to pick up and they were like, okay, we'll just do whatever you want now. And she's like, good. <laughs> I feel like that's also when you see the length of the books just skyrocket. Oh yeah, because that's just like to do. yeah, yeah. The I'm first three are like pretty much book. the same length, and then like the last four are like way thicker. Yeah, I, um, the Half Blood Prince is pretty pretty close to the Prisoner of Azkaban, but yeah, that Half Blood a- Prince is a little more self contained. Yeah, and that one yeah. is also the only film that's rated PG instead of PG thirteen. After you get to Goblet of Fire, yeah, there's that one's just like a little breath of fresh air, just like. This is just about Snape. <laughs> yeah, teenage shenanigans. Yeah, yeah like, like making like, out. 
Dumbledore dies. So like, how can you have a prominent character die and still have it PG? I think it's because there's no scary monsters. I was scared. And like, I'm sorry. <laughs> the Inferi did creep Inferi out. are hella scary. Oh shit. I kind of was like, cause the oh, Inferi are terrifying and those are in book scary. four. Yo, I, I cited that in our scary Potter episode. Yeah. As my scary. I mean, those creatures are fucking scary, dude. Yeah. No, they're like <sighs> super zombies. They're terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I don't fucking know. Seems like a weird choice to me. I don't know. Yeah, but um, anyway, I fucking love Prisoner of Azkaban. It's just, if it, it feels so comfy, cozy, just like, I feel like Chamber of Secrets is like a Halloween vibe, and Prisoner of Azkaban is like a Thanksgiving vibe, you know what I mean? It is. <laughs> I also, um, just growing up, uh, I used to have a PlayStation, um, and Grace would watch me play Brad. the air. Grace, <laughs> Grace would watch me play the Harry Potter games on the PlayStation. Oh, fuck yeah. PlayStation, and, like, Uno? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, but <laughs> I uh, was going to say, the third game was the first, like, semi-open world version of the Harry Potter games, which was, like, added so much more depth. So, like, you could fly on Buckbeak, like, all around the grounds, and it was, like, the best thing ever. Yeah, um, it was pretty cool. Red. Oh my god, I'm gonna insert the music with his liftoff music. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, are y'all ready to move on to some plugs? Sure. sure. Yeah. Haley, will you start us off, please? I will start off. Uh, I'm Haley. You can find me on Twitter at the Rit to, to Wit, though, please don't. Um, She's funny. It's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> and I am going to plug uh, kind of an oldie, but still a goodie um, Grand Budapest Hotel, Wes Anderson. Classic. Um, yeah, I rewatched it pretty recently. It's just like. If we're talking vibes, it's just like a winter, like, like the shitty part of winter vibe and like also a 1920s and 30s vibe. But like it's Wes Anderson, so everything is pastel. But like if you're not a Wes Anderson fan, it's a good option because it's like, it's not just like weird people being yeah. weird. It's, it's, it's like not fun. super Wes Anderson. <laughs> yeah, no, it's still Wes like Anderson very, light. Yeah, it yeah. still has like very much his signature, but it's not just like, I don't know. The characters are very interesting and the story is like a lot of fun. Um, and it's really funny and really sweet and really heartfelt. So yeah, Grand Budapest Hotel. Oh, I'm sad you watched that by yourself because I've been wanting, well, without me, because I've been wanting to rewatch that one. Too. I can, I can watch that movie literally anytime. <laughs> like it's, it's like one of my rewatchables. Like I will yeah. watch that movie with you anytime. That is Ralph Fiennes, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Wow. Who plays Lord Voldemort? Mm-hmm. He's uh, like he is such a chameleon, and also an he is such a good actor. He's Ralph Fiennes. Fiennes. Yeah, he's pretty he hot. And also, um, Joseph Fiennes who plays as Shakespeare in Love. Super hot. He's not extra hot as Voldemort. I mean, <laughs> some people have no nose kinks. You don't know. No kink shaming on this podcast. Yeah, how dare, how dare you? You're right. No, you're I'm super sorry. pale. Super pale. No nose. Well, what what Bald. we what Come we on. do condemn is the the racism. That's what we condemn. Oh, indeed. Yeah, yes, that's indeed. Absolutely. absolutely. Okay, I finally got a text back from one of my hosts about okay. Steve Martin. He said, <laughs> oh, "Do tell." Oh, she just it's just Rachel. She said, OMG, same. I love him in cheaper by the dozen, and now I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> that is not that is not, that is what not I was looking for. I am depressed again. This is the worst. <laughs> Why are you friends with them? <laughs> oh, that le- wait, oh, I was gonna plug one thing, but now I'm like, maybe I'll plug my favorite Steve Martin movie. You have so many like options. Eight different things at so this far. point. <laughs> Grace, will I- you please plug next? Yes, I would love to. I'm going to plug a little little rom-com movie. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's called The Big Sick. Yes! Have you yeah. seen it? Yeah, yeah. it's good. Okay. It's yeah. so good. It's so cute. Just to give everybody a little bit of context, it's kind of about this um, struggling stand-up comedian with a one-man show about his Pakistani-American background. He meets... Emily, um, a white American, they start dating. Long story short, there's some like 
you know, difficult inter ethnic, interracial things that happen. Um, and then mm, Emily gets a weird illness and she goes into a big, coma. The big thing. <laughs> what? Yes. Did yes. you? Yes. Listen. Did you just spoil that for us? No, no that's not. That's, that's, the, that's not the plot. Okay. That's the okay, plot. Good. That's the plot. Everyone, calm down. Yeah. Um, but it's really, it's such a good movie. It's I watched it so recently. Good. Um, but my only thing is, is that if you. You can watch it on Prime if you have Prime, but don't read the description on Prime because it gives away kind of an important piece of information oh. that sort of like made the whole movie for me when I found it out at the end. So just based on this really awesome description I just gave you, watch the movie. Don't and read then anything. <laughs> don't read anything. Just press play. I typically don't. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and yeah, I just highly recommend it. It's really, really cute and really good. Hell yeah. I, I mean, I, I second that plug. Will, what do you have to plug? So I have, I guess, two things that I want to plug. Um, the first one is going to be something very uh, near and dear to my heart. It's uh, um, something that we all have grown to hate, but also respect. And that is masks. Um, wear masks. Uh, wherever you go, wear a mask. Because... Like, COVID is hella on the rise. Uh, Mm -hmm. We were seeing it in the hospital running rampant, and it is horrible. So, wear your masks. It's very important. Yeah. Um, The second one is, uh, on a lighter note, my fiancé has been starting to make clay earrings. Um, So, she has a Facebook page now called Rosé and Clay. Instagram. What's the Instagram? It's the same thing. Oh, it's (laughs) Rosé. Rose and Clay. She has an Instagram as well. Um, I believe in that in. It's Rose and Clay because of uh, the fact that uh, you got to drink Rose while you're making your clay earring. Man, I fucking um, love Rose and Clay. But they, she is, she's very artistic, so she's very good at it. And uh, it's very therapeutic for her. So, like, uh, why I'm doing it. she's doing it because our beautiful, lovely dog, Eliza. God lover has decided to have multiple strokes in the past couple of months. And so she's racked up the vet bills. And so paying for a wedding is very difficult with, with, with vet bills. Thanks to our, with thanks to our pug. Um, so, uh, she's trying to raise money to help pay for vet bills for Eliza. Aww. Um, and Eliza is walking again. Thank goodness. But oh my gosh. Yeah. she, she, she had lost the function on the left side of her body. For a period of time, but we've been doing physical therapy and she's doing very good. She's doing great. I can confirm that. She can go up and down the stairs now. Yeah, she's doing good. Um, But I can confirm. Talk about earrings right now. Wow. Okay. I'm I'm an asshole. Okay. (laughs) No, no, we're all in this together. We're all talking about the same thing. (laughs) But I can confirm that the earrings are really beautiful and they're great quality. So everybody should check it out. Hell yeah. As always, I've been your host, Christina. You can follow me on Instagram at your girl of the world. You can follow me on Twitter at Tina Fontina. And I am going to plug two things today because I was going to plug one thing, but I really also want to plug my favorite Steve Martin movie. So (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to start with my original plug, which was the Holes movie. I watched that yesterday. It's not the Steve Martin movie. It's not. No, no. Just wait. I'm plugging two movies. (laughs) (laughs) I guess. I mean, I'll plug the Holes book too. The whole Holes. The whole (laughs) (laughs) Holes. I reread the book by Louis Sakar. Is that how you say it, Haley? I don't. No. Okay. I have no idea. I've never heard anyone say it out loud. And I read it recently and um I watched the movie starring Shia LaBeouf. Running for your life from Shia LaBeouf. He's brandishing a knife. It's Shia LaBeouf. Lurking in the shadows. Hollywood superstar Shia LaBeouf. Living in the woods. Shia LaBeouf. Killing for sport. Shia LaBeouf. Eating all the bodies. It's great. The book is great. The film is great. I highly recommend it. I wept. I forgot how beautiful the love story between Catherine and Sam is. And it's really, it. I mean, it's like kind of ahead of its time in terms of oh, the way it deals with like yeah. race and like class. Sure. 
and I cried and I was like, Patricia <laughs> Arquette, you shoot that sheriff right in the face. <laughs> no, I will, I will die on this hill. Holes is the great American novel. It covers everything. It covers class. Yeah. It covers immigration. It covers racism. It's it covers magic. Texas. I feel like it's being so in Texas yes. is so American. And Here's a little fun sneak peek. Our December Patreon bonus episode is about holes. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited for that. So if you're not already, definitely sign up for our Patreon. It's uh, There's a link in the show notes. And um, we do a bonus episode every month. And if we get enough patrons, we're going to switch it up to two every month. So, And then I'm also just going to let y'all know that my favorite Steve Martin movie is called Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid. It was filmed in the 80s, and it's Steve Martin... It, it's like a like a, a 40s noir detective film, and it's Steve Martin acting against clips from 40s, from like old timey black and white movies. So it's like, it's got like Humphrey Bogart and like all those old timey actors, and it's spliced in yeah. with Steve Martin acting. So it's like some of the scenes make no, like almost no goddamn sense because they're just taking scenes from old movies and like, crafting steve martin's story around it and it's so fucking good i it's so artful i i recommend it so much and it's anti-nazi and everyone loves that so it's true steve martin deserves it honestly yeah and he's so young and cute in that movie i recommend it so much (laughs) dead men don't wear plaid so that's it we've um we've launched on into prisoner of azkaban we're about to take flight with buckbeak Ooh. Yeah. For some reason, that reminded me. Um, when I was a kid, I always had the Harry Potter movie soundtracks because I was a band ner- nerd, and um, it's just something that I did. And um, this one, the Prisoner of Azkaban soundtrack, is like by far the most stressful for some reason. I think hmm. it's like the Night Bus song is really scary, and then like the Dementor music is really scary. It's like a really like high stress soundtrack. So I just that. I just remembered that. So, but something to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, night Christina, bus. I have a request for you. When you mentioned Shia LaBeouf a little bit of a go, could you please sub in like the Shia LaBeouf song? Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Living in the woods. Shia LaBeouf. Killing the sport. Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> Eating all the bodies. Well, thank you so much for coming on to start off Prisoner of Azkaban with us. Of course. Thank you for having me. It's I feel like I feel like um it's about time. I've been wanting to be on for a while, but I haven't had the courage to ask. Oh, so so, thank so thank thank you and I hope to be on again in the future. Yeah, every time someone comes on for a first chapter, I'm like, don't worry, we'll have you back on for a better one for a little bit better of a chapter <laughs> it's probably gonna be a quidditch one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are all adult refined <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. we will definitely bring you back on maybe for goblet of fire because there are so many chapters in that book there's, i'm like i a... don't know that many people <laughs> <laughs> so well that's that um get the fuck out of my owl cage <laughs> <laughs> Nice, well done. (laughs) Bye. 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 See you guys. The Restricted Section was created by me, Christina Kahn, based on the book series by J.K. Rowling. Theme music by Ryan Kahn. Logo by Michael Hardison. Be sure to like our Facebook page, The Restricted Section Podcast. Join our Facebook group, The Restricted Section Detention Crew, Follow us on Instagram at Restricted Section Pod and on Twitter at Restricted Pod. If you want to join our Discord server, shoot a message to one of our socials and I'll get you connected. You can also email us at RestrictedSectionPod at gmail.com with thoughts, feelings, complaints, or even lavish praise. Until next time, Podheads. Oh yeah, Christina. Will has a bone to pick with you. Do you have a, I have a complaint from a prior episode where you incorrectly described Grace as the older twin. Really? Slash better twin. And <laughs> well, I'm both of those are incorrect. Girl. Both of those are incorrect. <laughs> no, no. Um, I am older by a whole two minutes. They were wow. the best, okay. best two minutes of my I life. Don't, I don't know why um, I thought Grace was the older. Grace, were you like bigger or something? She did way more than me. She tried to take all my nutrients <laughs> I, I and resorbs. I think I just them. had something in my brain as like Grace is the hey. alpha twin. Listen. <laughs> she she was the alpha in utero, but I came out first because I was scared of her. Christina, try to put in a clip of um Mabel from 
from uh, Gravity Falls going, Alpha Twin! Alpha Twin!